So very, very cool. I have a question from a, uh, a listener here. So I posted that you would be coming up on the show. And Solomon Khan, who is the founder and CEO of a tech company called Delivery Layer, he he wrote a question that I thought was pretty funny because I yeah I said that we were going to be talking about the singularity, the development of artificial superintelligence, and how this would how this would overhaul human society. And Solomon Solomon says, how much does being an AI expert like you are give you credibility to predict what society will look like after we achieve an artificial superintelligence? And so Solomon goes on to say to him, all the singularity people seem like they're just making wild guesses on things like tech expectations, societal implications. We could probably go through Pestle Framework and say where you're making wild guesses across all six. So I guess the question, if I was to rephrase that question a little bit, it would be, why does spending time thinking about the singularity potentially make you more able to predict what is going to happen after the singularity if kind of one of the key things about the singularity itself is that you're saying, I can't see anything beyond it. I, well, I think I'd like to think that I try not to predict what happens beyond it. I try to give people the, the, the boundaries of what could happen. And you know, in each one of the six singularities, I don't know what, what whether it's going to be kind of a positive outcome or a negative outcome, but I try to give people the parameters is a, is a world of, uh, for example, in the economic singularity where, 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 where we have um, economic or social unrest because because of mass technological employment or a world where people have access to all of the goods that they need so they don't have to have a social unrest. I, I don't know I don't know what world we're going to create. Ultimately, it's down to, to us all individually to make good decisions, to hold ourselves accountable, hold governments account, leadership account for making sure that we're making these the good decisions. I, I hear this 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 point a lot though, which is you know what. Why are technologists thinking about you know so, social questions or philosophical questions? And I, I, I think obviously you know technologists at the moment have a loud voice because AI has become become as happened. Um, but um, I'm a massive advocate of bringing together the most diverse group of experts um, to get them to kind of surround a, a, a question um, and, and try and answer that question. So so I I, I I concur. I think we should be careful about listening to the people that are developing uh, the technologies, even though that's you know the, the thing that's popular right now, and we should be engaging with historians and psychologists and philosophers and you know all of the diverse aspects of humanity to face into some of these questions. And when I you know Consium, for example, um, the consciousness company, I think I've managed to attract an incredible diverse well, uh, group of, of, of experts that actually don't agree on what consciousness is. But the idea is that you get these different perspectives, these diverse perspectives to make sure that we've got the right eyes looking at this problem. So I'm a massive fan of, of, of diverse perspectives. Um, I, I agree uh, that, um, that technologists is not, is not, uh, technologists are not, the, uh, uh, not necessarily the, the right people to be asking some of these questions, but um, I try not to answer them. I try to give people the parameters.